Hello everyone, my name is Anna, and in this video I will be discussing food insecurity in New Mexico. So to start, what is food insecurity? Food insecurity is a lack of access at times to enough food for an active healthy life for all household members. Food insecurity is not necessarily something that families experience every single month of the year, but it could just be for a few months. And additionally, food insecure households may have to make trade-offs between other basic needs such as housing uh, or medical bills and food. Currently in the United States, according to the USDA, there are 38 million people experiencing food insecurity. And there are 12 million children experiencing food insecurity. Looking at food insecurity in New Mexico, as provided by Feeding America, there are over 298,000 food insecure people in New Mexico, which is 14.2% of the population, and over 140,000 food insecure children in New Mexico, which is 22% of the population. Looking at Bernalino County, Specifically, there are over 86,000 people who are food insecure, which is 12.8% of the population. So what impacts food insecurity? One of the greatest factors is income. Lower income families are much more likely to be food insecure than higher income families. Additionally, location is a big factor. The USDA report found that southern states experience higher rates of food insecurity. Another reason why location might is impact food insecurity is if you're living in a food desert where you don't have access to easy access to affordable nutritious food also if there's a lack of public transportation in your neighborhood that can also affect your ability to get food additionally household type um, households with children are much more likely to experience food insecurity and then lastly and perhaps most notably is race the usda and several other reports have found that the black, Hispanic, indigenous communities are much more likely to experience food insecurity than their white counterparts. So what are the effects of food insecurity? Food insecurity certainly affects the physical health. A lot of families end up eating more processed, unhealthy foods since those are more affordable than fruits and vegetables and more nutritious foods. Um, so that can really impact the physical health. Additionally, mental health is impacted. There's a lot of stress and anxiety around figure out where your next meal is going to come from. And then for children who aren't having regular access to nutritious food, this can greatly impact their development. Um, and so it's really important that young kids are getting stable and continuous access to nutritious food. And then additionally, food insecurity forces individuals to make really difficult decisions. So some of those difficult decisions are listed on this infographic. So 69% of individuals have to choose between food and utilities. 79% marked or noted purchasing inexpensive and unlawfully foods. Looking at New Mexico specifically, 75% of New Mexicans with low food insecurity um, reported purchasing inexpensive unhealthy food in order to have at least some food at home to eat. So again, that's the that idea that it's not necessarily that food insecure individuals want to be eating these processed unhealthy foods. It's just that that's what's affordable and available to them. So one of the largest programs that helps individuals who are food insecure is the SNAP program. The SNAP program is a government program and it stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. It was formerly called Food Stamps. And food stamps work where eligible um, individuals can apply to receive it and then they'll receive a card and it will be loaded each month with money that can be used at specific locations solely for food. And SNAP does a lot to help individuals be able to afford more food, but it's not a cure-all. And a lot of individuals report that the SNAP benefits don't last to the end of the month. So 79% of the benefits that individuals received are generally used up by day 14. So they've used up over half their benefits and they still have two more weeks of the month to make it through. So currently in New Mexico, every week, nearly 70,000 New Mexicans see food assistance, which is the equivalent of the city the size of Santa Fe needing assistance every week. So that's a lot of people that are in 
that are needing food assistance um, in New Mexico. So let's look at some New Mexico solutions, um, things that are currently in New Mexico that either are already addressing this problem or could be adapted to better address this problem. So one of the main programs that has been addressing food insecurity in New Mexico, and specifically in Albuquerque, is the Roadrunner Food Bank of New Mexico, which is a part of Feeding America. And Feeding America is a large program organization that has been doing a lot to um, address and collect research and data on hunger in America. Um, and so food, the Roadrunner Food Bank, because it is a food bank instead of a pantry, what how they operate is that they receive food from donations or a variety of sources store that food, and then they redistribute it. And one of the largest differences between banks, food banks and food pantries is that food banks, the um, kind of boxes that they're distributing to people are pre-assembled. So you, the individuals aren't choosing what food they're taking home. Um, often, this can vary, but food pantries, there's generally a little bit more choice involved where it's more like a grocery store style where individuals who need assistance can go in and pick the specific items that they would like. And Roadrunner Food Bank reports distributing nearly 60 million pounds of food per year, and they have 500 member partners, which include soup kitchens, schools, food pantries, senior centers. Um, the food pantry on UNM's campus works with Roadrunner Food Bank to receive some food. Another really important thing is that Roadrunner Food Bank's says that a third of their distribution is fruits and vegetables, which is really rare because it's really hard for certain food banks and facilities to keep fresh fruit and vegetables, um, partially because keeping it cool is difficult, but also just because they're perishable and so they don't last as long as maybe canned soups or staple pantry items. Um, but it's that's really important for human health to have fresh fresh fruits and vegetables. So it's really nice that Roadrunner Food Bank puts such an effort into including that. And the, another really interesting thing that Roadrunner Food Bank does is the mobile food pantry. So for some of those communities that either don't have a local food pantry or don't have easy access for cold storage, um, Roadrunner has this mobile food bank. And so they want, about once a month, they go to over a hundred different sites and it takes about two hours per site and they essentially set up like a pop-up food pantry um, and they provide households with 50 pounds of food and about half of that is going to be the perishable fruits and vegetables um, and they mostly serve families with children. Another really important thing that New Mexico is doing um, which I find really, really interesting is the Double Up Food Bucks. So this was founded by the New Mexico Farmers Marketing Association. And essentially for individuals who are receiving SNAP benefits, the Double Up Food Bucks matches what they're receiving from SNAP. Um, but what is matched can only be used on fresh local produce. Um, so there's 80 locations that will accept DUFB. Um, and of the DUFB participants, 75% of their families are eating more fruits and vegetables, and 57% are eating less junk food. And then um, DUFB also helps the farms in addition to the families that are food insecure or participants that are food insecure. And so as a result of DUFB, three out of four participating farmers report making more money um, and plan on hiring new staff. And so... I think this is a really great program. It supports local farmers. It helps um, families with food insecurity have more um, money to spend on food, but it also is encouraging them to purchase fruits and vegetables, which is going to be healthier for them. Lastly, Chispas Farm is a local farm in the South Valley. Um, New Mexico actually imports 90% of its food, so they could really improve by uh, by growing more food locally. Um, and you don't need a lot of land for this necessarily. Chispas Farm is only a four acre farm in the South Valley. It uses regenerative farming. They accept volunteers and work share. They teach classes for school groups and they have a farm stand 
um, that accepts DUFB. And so it's really cool to see that there are local farms that are trying to make a difference. So if these were expanded and we could support local, more local farms, increase the Double Up Food Bucks program, maybe have that combined with the Roadrunner Food Bank, I think there are a lot of good possibilities for adjusting, addressing food insecurity in New Mexico. So lastly, thinking about you wherever you are, um, do you know is food insecurity a problem in your neighborhood? Um, if it is, can you look around your neighborhood and see what assets are currently there that might be similar to what I have mentioned or could be different, but that would also maybe be work well to address food insecurity? Um, and of any of the solutions that I have, if they don't exist in your community, would it be feasible? Would you be able to implement it in your community? So thank you for watching and here are my works cited.